everybody. Um, so I work in this space that not everyone may have heard of before. It's called human-robot interaction. I kind of want to explain a bit and show you a bit about what I mean by that. As someone who cares deeply about human-centered design, I'm not interested in making artificial people. Um, what I'm interested in is building robots that can actually interact with people, do things for people, and be more effective in human environments, not just in factories, not just on battlefields. And we're working on this at Willow Garage building personal robots. This is one vision of a personal robot. This is what we make at Willow Garage. It was, it's called the PR2, Personal Robot 2. It's a 500 pound mobile manipulation platform. And that's a fancy way of saying it's a robot that rolls around and grabs stuff in human environments. And at Willow Garage, we have a bunch of these rolling around and grabbing things. Um, and there, we sort of have this little glimpse of a possible future. We stumble upon challenges. We work together to address them. And really, we're trying to sort of improve through iterative design the shape of these personal robots. Uh, one of the first problems we, and challenges that we came up against was, what should it look like? And when I saw the sketches of this guy, um, it had a whole bunch of cameras piled on top of his head. And to me, that looked like sort of a tarantula head stuck on top of a big gorilla body. Um, and I understand why you need to have lots and lots of cameras, because computer vision is hard, especially for artificial intelligence. And so you know, I worked together with them and the mechanical engineering team to figure out a, a better way to do it so that people wouldn't run away screaming. Um, and this was our, our solution. So we drew inspiration from the very friendly and approachable Mini Cooper car headlights, where you have to have a lot of headlights or a lot of cameras, but it still feels approachable. Um, and it's still usable for those who need to develop algorithms for these systems. Um, now, after you, know, you, you figure out what does it look like, you have to think more about how it behaves. What's it going to do? How is it going to be useful? And if it's in human environments, it's going to have to do stuff like open doors. Opening doors is really hard. It takes many, many months of development. And our teams are working on this for a long time in our office. Um, and that was fine, except that this guy was practicing in a hallway that was between my office and the coffee machine. And I need my coffee. So I would run in front of it every once in a while. And most of the time, it was OK. But every once in a while, the software engineers would look at me and say, you messed up its sensor data. Why did you do that? And I would say, I can't tell it's doing anything. Um, I can't tell the difference between when it's off, when it's on, when it's idle, when it's trying to open the door, when it's about to grab for that handle. And I don't want to be in its way. I don't mean to. So we, we sought out some help. And we happened to find this really great guy named Doug Dooley, who's a character animator at Pixar Animation Studios. And of all people, they know how to breathe life and readability into inanimate objects. So this is some of the work that he did with us. Right now, if you look at what the robot does, you know, it's trying to open the door, and it just sits there. There's no forethought. But what if you added some forethought? What if the robot could actually show you a little bit about, you know, I'm trying to do this thing, so maybe you shouldn't run in front of me. And it acknowledges that you're there, so you know it's not going to knock you out when it reaches out for that handle. Similarly, when the robot actually tries to open the door, many times they fail. And that's OK, because we're practicing, we're learning. Um, but it seems like he doesn't really care about it, right? It's like, yeah, whatever. It just happened. Um, but what if instead of not showing a reaction to that failure, it actually maybe looked a little disappointed? Um, and what we found through a bunch of our, our screen tests with these, with lots of people on the internet using Mechanical Turk, is that people actually feel like, at least if you're going to mess up, at least feel bad about it. Because then I'm going to feel like you're almost as capable as if you'd actually succeeded. Right? So we're doing a lot of behavior design there. Um, and you may have noticed you know, a lot of the ways that we find challenges and work through them is to have these sort of heated arguments, which is good. Um, but for our remote coworkers, that's really hard. When you're just a little tiny voice in a box on a table, it's very hard to be persuasive. And so one of our coworkers, Dallas, who lives in Indiana, um, he has to telecommute to California every day looking like this. And that may look a little bit like a video conferencing system, but it's actually much more than that. Dallas comes to work and can move his body around the space himself. He can have hallway conversations with us. He can hang out at the coffee machine with us and chit chat. Um, he can take a place at the table. And it's a really powerful thing um, for him to be more present, to exert his presence. So we don't hang up on him on the phone. He just gets up in your face. Um, <laughs> These are so useful that we built 25 more of them and put them all over different companies in the Bay Area. And after two years of doing studies in the field and in the lab, um, our spin-out company, Suitable Technologies, just came out with this as a real product called the Beam last month. Um, so you know, using human-computer interaction, we've been able to get from the mainframe to the personal computer. And I believe that using robots like the PR2, which is kind of like a mainframe, can start to get us there. Using awesome crowdsourcing services like Crowdflower can use human intelligence to do things that robots are not so good at. 
But the big question is what's next? And I believe, just like with the PC, we need entrepreneurs, designers, artists, scientists, roboticists, all of us, the people like the ones in here, to make some vision of that reality possible. Thank you.